that's the one that you said. That's the hot you said. Okay, well, I don't know. I thought it was. Okay. I don't know. Maybe the scrap will be over. Should they keep saying it was a freak accident? Yeah, at some point, are we ever going to sit up there on the, the same bench again? But you send me, you don't send me a letter. So they're just trying to write my, my condolences, but I'm not going to put on a Yeah, I think she's got her second. Fred P. didn't say anything either? No. He just said my friend. That's all he said. I can ask him. Yeah, so listen. He said, that's all I'm going to say. That's what he's. When I said, I'm going to send you a bitch. I didn't even look. You know, come to y'all. Yes. I just got it today. We'll call to order the City of Douglasville's City Council Legislative Work Session for tonight, which is April the 15th. We will have um, our invocation by the esteemed uh, Pastor Artley. And after that, we will have the Mayor Pro Tem lead us into the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand for the invocation. Esteemed, I'm gonna have to add that to my title now. <laughs> Doctor, doc <laughs> In Paul's uh, letter to the Romans, he writes, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, I just ask that you uh, lay your hands upon the city council tonight, Lord, that you bless them, that you be with them, that you give them the strength and that you give them the wisdom and the courage to make the decisions that they have to make. I thank you, Lord, for their service to the city, and I ask that you bless all those that come tonight. I ask that you bless them and give them safe travels as they all, uh, when they go home. And Lord, I just ask that you be here now and that we can feel the spirit in this room as we go throughout the meeting. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, ma'am. I, I told Miss Tate, anytime you need somebody to fill in, give me a call and I will be here to pray with you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank Mr. Mayor Pro Tim, for leading us in the pledge and Pastor Artley. Um, we appreciate you, and thank you so much for being the chair of our planning commission as well. Thank you for your service to the community. You're welcome. You're from United Methodist Church. 
Um, we do not have any uh, presentations, but I will go through the protocol for the meeting and then we will get into the agenda. We kind of have a lengthy agenda this evening, so we will um, go through it as quickly as we can, but take care of the business of the city of Douglasville. I'd like to welcome you to the city of Douglasville's legislative work session. I'm Douglasville's mayor, Rochelle Robinson. Tonight's meeting is being conducted um, in whole or in part by teleconference. We do have one elected official who is joining us virtually. And um, during this public hearing or public hearing for comments from the citizens and delegates, you'll be allowed to do so via Zoom software. And um, I will ask that the council member, when I call your name, that you will respond in the affirmative that you are indeed here and you can hear me, Dr. LaShawn Burdanley. I'm are here, you Mayor, here? thank you. You're welcome. And if you, I know you sound like um, the weather change with allergies, so. If you need to go, let us know as well. Um, this is an open meeting of the Douglasville Mayor and City Council. It's being conducted by teleconference consistent with the official code of Georgia annotated section 50-14-1G due to emergency conditions involving public safety in order to mitigate the transmission of the coronavirus and to reduce the risk of COVID-19 illness. That section, which you can find posted with agenda materials for this meeting, allows for local governments to meet in whole or in part by teleconference in the event of an emergency, so long as means are afforded for the public to have simultaneous access to the teleconference meeting. For this meeting, we are convening partially by Zoom software, as shown on the city's website, describing how the public may join, which is via YouTube media platform. This is a work session where agenda items are presented for discussion and no official action will be taken tonight. Official action will be taken on these items discussed tonight on Monday at 6 p.m., uh, Monday, April the 19th, 2021. If the business you're here for is not listed as an agenda item, there will be ample time under the agenda item comments from citizens and delegates section for you to discuss your business. Do we have anyone that's joining us virtually to make comments? Ms. Jackson, Assistant City Manager. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Jackson. Just a few protocol issues I'd like to go over to make you aware of, um, and after that we will get into our agenda. I will ask that you would please keep your comments and presentations on a professional level dealing with the facts that are important for this governing body to make our decisions. We will not accept comments that are considered by the chair to be of a personal attack on any individual or, or group of individuals. You'll receive a warning from the chair, and if you deviate from this requirement, a second deviation will request and you um, not continuing to speak. Only one person will talk at a time, of course. Please do not applaud or react to speakers or speak from the audience or cheer or uh, carry on conversations with anyone in the audience to be disruptive during this meeting. I remind you that we're only required to accept public comments during um, the public hearings. If you have any printed material, we ask that you would please present that to our assistant city manager. I think that's assistant city manager back there. Uh, to my right and your left, and she will pass that out to the council. If you have a cell phone, electronic device, any of those social media things uh, that we communicate with now, telephones or whatever, cell phones, we put those in silent mode. I'm saying telephones, I was at the museum today and we saw old telephone. Young people don't even know what it is anymore. But um, electronic device, if you please put those in silent mode so they will not be disruptive. The agenda items will be handled as the following. The committee chairperson will read the agenda item, then that person representing the agenda item or applicant will make his or her presentation, and uh, you'll present your information at that time. Myself and council members will possibly ask questions of the applicant so that will help us make our decision on next Monday. After that, the committee chair will ask for comments or statements from the audience. There is a maximum of 20 minutes for those in support of agenda items and 20 minutes for those in opposition of those particular agenda items, and each person has five minutes to present. Unless you have more people than four or five, you can split up your time three minutes a, um, a person, but um, the totality, you have 20 minutes each side. And there is a speaker card that you should have filled out if you'd like to talk about any agenda, any agenda item, and after you've done that, please give that card to uh, the assistant city manager, I mean, assistant city clerk, 
And um, when you come to the microphone, please give us your name and address for the record so that we'll have that um, when you approach the microphone. Each person has one opportunity. This is not a question or debate uh, format. It's really just here for us to receive the information and make our decision. And please address all of your comments to the chair. I know that's a whole lot of talking, but those are um, all of the comments and uh, protocol for the meeting. And again, if there is an item in this agenda uh, where your comments or your concerns are not covered during the time of comments from citizens and delegates, you may come forward and present yourself um, and give, you have five minutes to speak. So now we will move on with the agenda as it is printed. And our first agenda item is economic committee, is economic development committee. That's chaired by council member, Mayor Pro Tem Terry Miller. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have no business under the Economic Development Committee at this time. Thank you, sir. We'll move on then um, to Finance Committee. That's chaired by Council Member Mark Adams. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have You're two welcome. items. It seems mm -hmm. as though we spoke of these just a moment ago in our mm -hmm. committee meetings, but mm -hmm. we'll go through them again for the... I have no idea why that, how that is going <laughs> off. I've I know never mine received a phone too. call on my iPad <laughs> in my life. Um, so uh, finance. First item is adopt an ordinance to amend the city of Douglasville's fiscal year 2020-21 general fund budget. Ms. Callan shared with us in our committee meetings uh, what that <coughs> involves, and we do have it uh, on our laptops. If you just give us a, an overview uh, quickly, if you can, Ms. Callan, just for the essence of time is sure. all that we have going on tonight. Sure. Thank you. Sure. Karen Callan, Finance Director, 6695 Church Street. Mm -hmm. The budgetary effect of this budget amendment is zero. For every line item that was over budget, we were able to offset it with a line item that had excess funds. Um, it involves the police department, uh, debt service payment reclassification, and I would say the main, uh, one of the main items in the other group is replacement of the jockey pump at West Pines. Indeed. Does anyone know what the <laughs> jockey pump is? I don't know what that is. I mean, obviously, it's something that's that's much needed. I just have never heard of that being called a jockey pump. I thought that what, was like the races or something. And it's irrigation jockey pump. Has something to do with irrigation, I'm <laughs> yeah. sure. Okay. And that, that time is coming up as we begin to see our, uh, our grasses green up. They'll be needing some irrigation. Okay. Uh, questions, comments of that particular item? Uh, Dr. Perdanley, did you have any comment or question? No, sir. Thank you. Okay. Seeing none, then we will vote on that on Monday. Thank you, Ms. Catlin. We'll move on quickly to uh, item B, adopt an ordinance to amend the City of Douglasville's fiscal year 2020-21 multiple grant fund budget. Now, I believe that uh, Mr. Bird is going to help us with that. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Shane Good Bird, evening. County Manager, 6695 Church Street. Uh, as mentioned previously in our committee meetings that were held earlier, we're essentially amending our original multiple grant fund budget for the Riverside Parkway Bridge. It's a rehabilitation of that bridge. We started out with a budget of 662.902. That was our original construction estimates. And recently with an LC Whitford contract, we have uh, an obligation to increase that budget for that contract plus additional construction management services with AECOM Technical Services. There is an 80-20 split between the construction costs. Just wanted to highlight that. So 80% will be reimbursable through the Georgia Department of Transportation and a 20% obligation from the general fund. So those are transfers into our multiple grant fund for a total amended budget of $903,757. Thank you, Mr. Bird. Just, uh, just a general statement here, I believe that We've seen the project grow by probably close to 30%, but how many years have we been working on this? Oh, goodness. Uh, it was in process when I first started here in 2013, I believe. So okay. it's been quite the, uh, quite the project that's come into fruition. Makes perfect sense why it has increased then. Questions, comments? Dr. Berdanley? No, sir, thank you. Okay. Well, we're glad to see this hopefully coming to fruition quickly, and we appreciate your your help with that. We'll take this up on Monday night for a vote. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bird. Thank you. Madam Mayor, that's all that we have under finance tonight. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, finance team. We'll move on then to the next um, agenda item, which is Housing and Community Affairs Committee, and that's chaired by Councilmember Dr. LaShawn Burdanley. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have two items tonight. The first item is appoint Ms. Antoinette Wright to the Douglas County Community Service Board to fill an unexpired term expiring December 31st, 2022. Ms. Chelsea Jackson. 
Thank you, Councilwoman. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council Chelsea Jackson, 6695 afternoon. Church Street. Earlier today in your committee's meeting, you did interview Ms. Antoinette Wright to be appointed to the Douglas County Community Service Board to fill an unexpired term that are expired next year on December 31st, 2022. There are no other individuals that would like to be appointed to this board at this time. Thank you, Ms. Jackson. So we'll um, take this up on Monday. Um, would anyone object if we put this on the consent agenda? I, I thought I'd like to add this. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to add it to the consent agenda. Item B is to adopt a resolution to approve and adopt the Community Development Department's guide to requesting the Georgia Initiative for Community Housing, which is also GICI, mm -hmm. low, ho low Income Housing Tax Credit, letter of support, and to provide for the due dates in application year 2021. This is April McNow. Great. April McCown, 6701 Church Street. So what you have in front of you are three separate attachments. One is going to be the resolution that would enact us to move forward in a GIC process with um, applications. You'll also have um, the GIC checklist, which is also attached. And then you'll also have the, um, the scoring methodology in which staff would score internally and provide the recommendations based on what uh, is stated in the resolution. So we have received our alumni status. Uh, I know you've heard about GIG. There, I know there's a couple of individuals who served on the GIG uh, board or on the GIG uh, team here locally. So I can take questions if you have any. Thank you, um, Ms. McGown. Just have questions. Um, we discussed this a couple of months ago and we, um, there were a lot of the mayor and council, we had some comments in regards to the um, tax credit application. So I see that those, um, it has been tightened a little bit um, based on our recommendations. Does anyone see anything that um, was not added? Okay, so yeah. Miss, um, I just have a question Miss, um, to April. Once um, you, this is submitted, do you have any applicants at this point um, that you are familiar with? Yes, so we have two individuals, or I should say two firms that are interested or have expressed interest. Um, however, they are pending um, with this application. They, they do know that we're formulating a process right now. Okay, great. And the deadline for this would be um, May. The applications would need to be submitted, is that by May 2021? So May 2021 is going to be DCA's deadline. It's the last uh, two weeks of May for their gig applications throughout the entire state. However, we've internalized a deadline. We've condensed it just a tad to fit this year's mold. So it will reflect something a little bit different, uh, which is in the resolution. Um, so we're condensing it to where um, they are required to submit applications by um, April the 29th will be our due date here in the city of Douglasville. Okay, great. So are there any questions or comments from our mayor council members? Okay, if not, I would also like to add this to the consent agenda if there are no objections. I don't see any, Dr. Burdino. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. That is all that I have tonight. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. We'll move yes, on then to item number eight, which is legislative and intergovernmental committee. That's chaired by Council Member Samuel Davis. Adopt an ordinance to repeal the section 2-14 of the city charter and to amend the section 2-364 of the ethics code of the city of Douglasville to allow the ethics board to review conflict of interest complaints. And that meant two of two, Ms. Woodward. Thank you, Chairman Davis. Glenn Woodward, staff attorney for the city of Douglasville. Um, this item has come before the city council a couple of times and I do not have any updates at this point, but if you have any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Okay, Mayor and Council, we have any questions? No, sir, I don't have any. Okay, Council. Madam Mayor, if uh, it's Council pleasure, can I put it on the consent agenda for minus Beth? I see heads nodding, Mr. Chairman. I think it's fine. Okay, thank you, Madam Mayor. That's all I have. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. We'll move on then to Personnel and Organization Committee. That's chaired by Council Member Chris <clears throat> Watts. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have two You're items welcome. tonight, Personnel and Organization. Item A is authorize the mayor to sign a staffing agreement with People Ready Inc. 
to provide professional employment services and fill vacant city positions. And uh, Brian Westfield will be presenting this. Brian Westfield, Human Resources Manager, 6695 Church Street. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, so we're here to present information on a uh, staffing agreement with People Ready. Uh, we're looking to fill some critical positions in our public services department. Uh, this staffing agreement will target specific uh, specialties. We're looking at the commercial sanitation driver, sanitation driver, laborer, refuse collector, and equipment operator. Um, you should have a copy of the agreement in your, in your packets. So uh, with this agreement, uh, if it is approved, we intend to move swiftly to, to fill these positions in order to ensure that public services is uh, meeting the operational needs for some upcoming events, recycling, those type of events. Subject to your questions. Uh, more than happy to answer any questions you might have. Uh, before I ask my question, uh, anybody that would like to uh, get a comment in or a question? Yes, Madam Mayor. I had a quick question. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Good to see you, Dr. Bryan. Yes, ma'am. Um, how, how are they looking? I mean, the, the pool for vacancies or applicants. I know that a lot is going on in the cities now, and these are critical positions that we're looking for. Madam Mayor, are you talking our, our current vacancies? Or yes, sir. Yeah, so we're looking at a total of 10 positions, and that's mm -hmm. a contingency estimate based upon people coming, people going. So we're looking at 10 positions we're looking to fill. Mm -hmm. Specifically, uh, two commercial sanitation drivers, uh, three sanitation drivers, two laborers, two refuse collectors, and one equipment operator. Okay, and we kind of have turnover in that office. Do you think we'll be able to secure those individuals? I do, in our conversations with People Ready, uh, they have given us some estimates uh, mm -hmm. of who's available and also given us time frames where uh, if this uh, agreement is signed, we should be able to, to move pretty swiftly to get those positions filled. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Westfield. Thank you, Mr. Yes, Chairman. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, anyone else uh, here? Councilwoman Burdanley. No, sir, I don't have any questions. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so we fill these positions using um, uh, this company and, uh, and then another opening. How quickly, if, if another opening appears for whatever reason, whether it's one of their folks or one of the other folks that's working for the city, how quickly uh, do those positions get filled uh, once they're on board? Uh, yes, sir. So it depends on the position. If it's anything dealing with the driver or equipment operator, they would need two weeks advance notice. Okay. And so they, these folks are already trained, uh, or are they going to be trained in addition to whatever training they received once they come on board? Great question, sir. They would come already trained, ready to go. Okay, that's good. Good. Okay, any, uh, any other questions or comments? I'd like to place this on the consent agenda for, for Monday, if that's okay. Looks like it's a go. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Uh, Wright, Westfield, I mean. Uh, and then uh, item B is authorize the mayor to sign the request for CARE here to participate in COVID-19 vaccination administration to authorize CARE here to provide COVID-19 vaccine services. And Ms. Austin Bing will be present. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Madam Mayor and Council. Mm -hmm. Tia Austin being 6695 Church Street, Human Resources Department. This item before you is an amendment to our original agreement with our wellness center uh, staff uh, care here, a premise mm -hmm. health company. And this amendment um, will allow us to be able to uh, vaccinate um, our employees' dependents as well as any other um, people that we deem necessary to receive this vaccine to include our part-time employees, mayor and council. Um, this, this particular amendment that we have in place, um, CARE here is already staffed and ready to begin to administer um, the vaccine. These um, will be done by appointments only, and we will work with CARE here to um, track our vaccinations um, for our participants that are already on the plan, as well as um, our dependents and anyone that we deem necessary to receive um, the vaccination. So this is um, a legal procedure to be able uh, to allow us to do that um, outside of our current employees. Thank you, Ms. Halston Bing. Uh, one quick question for me. Um, what would you say, we've already uh, vaccinated a number 
of employees or that hasn't started yet? It, it hasn't started yet to begin to administer. We, they stand ready. They have the uh, vaccines in place. Uh, we have put out communication and for those appointment slots. So um, we're ready, but we're okay. just, um, we have not pushed the button on any, uh, administering any at this time. Um, we have appointment slots open up for Monday, April 19th. So we hope to have to begin um, on that date. And if we pass this in June, we'll also be able to vaccinate employees dependents yes, that are sir. on the health plan. That are on the health plan, our part-time employees that are not on the health plan, our mayor and council, just whatever group of uh, participants that we authorize would be able to be vaccinated. Okay. Um, there will be um, a test station and things of that nature for care here uh, to be able to move forward. But yes, we would not limit that to just our plan participants. Okay, thank you. Uh, Madam Mayor, do you have any questions? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, not a question, just a comment, maybe a question. Thank you, yes, Ms. Austin Bean. I wanted to commend you and um, public health and care here for expediting this whole process and the city manager for the entire Douglasville team bringing this information together to help us uh, to get some of our employees and the dependents vaccinated. That's such a blessing. Um, so the question that I had is in um, relationship to insurance. Today I had my second vaccine at the um, health department <laughs> and so <laughs> they asked for your insurance card and so I'm not certain and my daughter had to have her second vaccine on campus and so um, at Kennesaw, so they asked for her insurance card as well. But initially, when I went to the mall, they did not. So do, when they asked for your, inf because she was kind of apprehensive, she's like, mommy, they're asking for my insurance. Mm -hmm. Do they bill insurance? Or because we're with care here, it is not billed? Or when they have asked for your insurance, they do bill your insurance, is that correct? I imagine that that's just for tracking purposes. We are not, okay. um, there is no cost to receive um, the COVID vaccine through our insurance for our employees. There will also okay. be no cost for anyone else that we um, authorize to use um, those we have pass-through cost structure with care here that's already built in, so there mm -hmm. will be there will be no cost um, from a care here standpoint, a Douglasville right. standpoint. As far as um, any other entities that are administering, uh, it's my guess that they are, they're using that insurance card to track who they're administering the vaccine um, through. But there is no, there should be no charge. There shouldn't be no a mail. cost. Okay. No. Oh, Ms. C. Manager, did you have a comment? Uh, no, Ms. Austin Bing is correct. Um, Entities that basically provide the vaccine can charge back to the federal government. So if there's a tracking mechanism to know that you've received the vaccine, they can get reimbursed for that. Hmm. And just if my, I can my, add, my experience. from my experience, um, I had to give my insurance card on my second dose. Mm -hmm. And my insurance company was billed for administering the vaccine, but not for the vaccine itself. Yeah. Okay because I didn't give it the first time. It just made me a little confused because I, right. I mean, I'm on the community services board and we um, had the site as the mall, but we couldn't get in before our, say the city and say the county before next week. So they sent us to the public health and they asked right. for the card. I was just a little confused about that. Yes, ma'am. I had both of my shots were at Walgreens, not meaning mm -hmm. to plug them, but, but I wasn't asked for an insurance card on either, hmm. either occasion. So I, I think it just that seems to depend. I don't know why it, some do and why some I, don't. I think it's the entity's choice to be able to get reimbursed for that service. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Yes, I appreciate the feedback. I didn't mean to yes, open up the floor for, I just was a little bit confused and didn't know if we were going to have the same requirement for, because you said you don't have to be on our insurance, no. if we would have the same requirement for dependence of the of the city of Douglasville. No, we will not require that. Care here has um, a census list um, for our employees that are on the plan if they mm -hmm. um, so choose to do, you know, that that process, but they're not requiring that to um, administer the vaccine. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Councilman Davis. Yes, uh, Ms. Bean, will you know which vaccine you'll be giving out? Thank you for asking, it will be Moderna. For me? Moderna. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else, uh, question or comment? Councilwoman Member Danley. No, sir, thank you. Okay, Mr. thank Chairman. you. If I may add one, one yes, thing, um, to just um, for your reference, for the uh, second dosage, um, those procedures, um, CARE here does expect to receive more vaccine. It has been partnering with Department of Public Health, um, even for the, for, the, for the first round. Mm -hmm. um, but they will assist um, our employees and our dependents and part-time employees with uh, registering for the, second, um, for the second phase as well. So they will be um, in, in a customer service capacity as well to help them do that. Thank you. 
Thank you, Ms. Austin Bing. <clears throat> if there are no other comments, I'd like to place this also on the consent agenda for Monday, if that's okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Ms. Austin Bing. Um, Madam Mayor, that's all I had tonight under personnel and organization. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, personnel, um, HR team. We appreciate your presentations this evening. We'll move on then to item number 10, which is Planning and Development Committee. That's shared by Councilmember Mark Adams. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, we have several items tonight under Planning and Development. Mm -hmm. uh, the first item was tabled on March, from March 15, 2021, to hold a public hearing and consider a request for a change in zoning from PUD Planned Unit Development District to LI, Light Industrial District, in the Quality Growth Development Overlay District for 22.17 acres. It's located at 1330, 1340, and 1346 Mount Vernon Road, Landlot 715, District 18, Section 2, Parcels 5, 8, and 15. The application is by LBA Realty, care of Mr. Doug Dillard, and Ms. Patrice Williams is going to present that for us. Go ahead, Good evening, Ms. Patrice Williams, Community, Deve Community Development Director, 6701 Church Street. This item was originally heard on March 11th and 15th. The applicant requested that the item be tabled to give them an opportunity to meet with the residents. With this application, the applicant is requesting a rezoning under the City of Douglas Soil Unified Development Ordinance, Section 12.08.05. The applicant's narrative states that the purpose of this request is to develop a warehouse distribution center. Since our last meeting, we learned from county staff that Sweetwater Park prefers light industrial in the area. Upon speaking with a representative of the park, this information was confirmed. We are provided an email exchange between the zoning administrator, Mr. Ron Anderson, and park staff. The applicant is with us tonight to provide you with their proposed changes to the original application. Thank you very much, um, <clears throat> Ms. Williams. We'll go forward then with our public hearing, and uh, we would like to hear, first of all, from the applicant. Uh, we do have a handout. I think that each of you have uh, this item 21-102 as a handout that would show a, um, some changes to the original plan, and they yes, have explained sir. that uh, very well, but I'd like to hear mm -hmm. from the applicant. Sir, if you'd, again, give us your name and address for the record as in last month, and we look forward to hearing from you. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Mm -hmm. Good to see you all again. My name is Baxter Russell. I'm an attorney with Dillard Sellers in Atlanta, Georgia, 1776 Peachtree Street, Northwest. Here tonight, of course, on behalf of the applicant, LBA Realty, presenting our request for a rezoning from PUD to the Light Industrial with a revised site plan, as you mentioned, in order to, to develop a Class A warehouse and distribution center, now at a size of 262,515 square feet. With me tonight, we have Mr. Dave Paquette, as well as John Wise and Sid Hellman with, a, with Paulson Mitchell, um, able to answer any engineering questions. So as we previously discussed, and as I believe you understand, we are looking to develop a warehouse facility at one of the last undeveloped parcels at the western edge of the warehouse corridor of Blair's Bridge Road and Lynch Road. Now while I say that, what we've learned through this process is that our parcel is very unique and has unique challenges, particularly how we impact those single family homes across the street from us. Last time I was here, I requested that you table a decision on this matter in order to allow us time to work on our site plan and to meet with those neighbors who could be affected. I'm happy to report that we did have a positive meeting with the neighbors across the street from us, the Jenny Lane neighbors. Um, I know one of them is here this evening and there may be more joining us electronically. I'm also happy to report that the client team, the engineering team, has worked to modify our site plan to address the comments and concerns from those neighbors as well as the concerns we heard from council itself. What I'd like to do at this time is just walk through some of those changes as you mentioned in the packet that you have. And what I will do is I will toggle back and forth for anyone who's joining us electronically or members in the audience between the site plan we originally proposed and our new revised site plan. So you have here um, on the screen the, the old site plan. The big issues that were raised and that we face with this project relate to one, traffic and safety along Mount Vernon Road, as well as the landscaping and visibility of our site itself along Mount Ver Vernon Road. And then, of course, as staff discussed, um, that I will not add a lot on unless you have any questions, but the impact on the park itself. 
So walking through our site plan changes, um, as you heard in my introduction, one of the largest changes we made was actually reducing the building size itself, uh, removing 37,485 square feet from the building. What this does, of course, first of all, is decrease the intensity of the warehouse use itself. It also provides more frontage space along Mount Vernon where we have more ability to do more landscaping, um, pull the parking lot away from the street, but then also add more buffer space and a larger detention pond on the southern end along that southern boundary. The second and maybe one of the most obvious when you look at the difference between the two plans, the second big change was we have removed the two full access entrances that we previously had on Mount Vernon Road. The only entrance that we are now showing is emergency access only. It has a gate with a Knox box able to be um, entered by emergency vehicles if it's needed, but this will not be a regularly used, regularly accessed entrance on Mount Vernon Road. Of course, we believe this greatly enhances and improves, this, improves the safety of this site as the neighbors were concerned, as council was concerned along Mount Vernon, as there won't be any traffic, even we were originally proposing automobiles accessing the parking lot there, there will not be any traffic, regular traffic flow, unless it's an emergency vehicle. The third change that I'll mention is our Lynch Road access. So now we've moved the automobile parking entrance um, and access to a full access entrance off of Lynch Road that will service both the truck court as well as the automobile parking lot. But what we have done with this, um, with this access point is we do have restrictive measures in place in order to um, require that the truck traffic, the industrial traffic, travel east down Lynch toward the Thor Thornton Road exit rather than encouraging them to come down Mount Vernon. Um, we have right turnout only signs, but we also have a, an overhead bar on the left turn out exit so that trucks cannot physically, unless they ram through a overhead bar, turn left at that access point. Uh, the fourth change that I'll mention, modification, as you can see pretty clearly, is we have reduced the size of the automobile parking lot um, from 300 spaces to 173 spaces. We feel this is more in line um, with the amount of parking that's required for our use and our site. Um, reduce the physical number of spaces, but it also reduces the physical width of that lot. As I mentioned, uh, bringing the parking lot away from Mount Vernon Road, it allows us to do more landscaping along Mount Vernon. Lastly, mentioning the landscaping along Mount Vernon, we have increased this landscaping. Um, the landscaping closest to the road, we're now proposing a 25-foot landscaping strip um, that's planted beyond the standards required by the code and the overlay code um, with also a five-foot berm. But what um, our great engineering team has been able to figure out from touring the site and, and making some modifications is that we now have a pretty extensive tree save area with the amount of trees that are, that are there and are healthy. We're able to save some of those, increase the buffering with the natural vegetation that's there. And now we're looking at a distance of 100 to 130 feet between the right-of-way and where the parking lot begins, and then, of course, a further distance to the building beyond. I'm gonna turn it over now, in just a moment, to Mr. Dave Paquette, but just in closing of my section, just a reminder, we're happy to answer any questions that you may have this evening, uh, would reserve any time for rebuttal. I wanna thank you all for your comments, staff for their work on this, and of course, the neighborhood for their comments to help us create and draft a better plan for everyone that um, we hope you'll be pleased with. We've made a good faith effort to respond to your concerns, to respond to the concerns of the neighbors, and to address those concerns with our site plan changes. So in summary, I'll turn it over to Dave now. And um, again, happy to answer any questions. There's a few more slides that we don't have to go through. You've got a summary, though, of all the changes we made, if that's helpful to review as well. Thank you, Mr. Russell. Thank you, uh, Baxter. Uh, Mayor, Council, thank you again for taking a little more time um, with us this evening. I'm not gonna articulate again what Baxter's already presented. Sir, could you, I'm sorry, could oh. you give us your name and address yeah, for the sorry. record, just, just for those that might be viewing us? Of course, Dave Poquette, 
353 North Clark, Chicago, Illinois. Thank you. Um, again, not going to regurgitate what Baxter has already told you. We just want to say thank you. Um, open it up for questions, and we do have our engineering team here who will do uh, what they can to answer any of those questions by council and uh, the public. Thank you. Thank you. Before we start our public portion, as far as allowing others to come and speak, is there anyone, Madam Mayor or uh, Dr. Berdanley, or anyone that would have any question or comment of the applicant at this time? Yes, Madam Mayor. Um, go. Go, do you, go ahead, Dr. Berdanley, you go ahead. Oh no, Madam Mayor can go. Um, thank you, Councilman Adams. Madam Mayor. Okay, well we're doing a dance. I guess I'll get, you know, start first on my card. Thank you so much, Attorney Russell and Mr. Polkett, um, the engineers and the uh, applicant for coming in this evening. And I wanted to um, really to show appreciation that you all have done a lot of heavy lifting, of, of course, with Councilman Estes and the neighbors and the community um, and, um, you know, at Jenny Lane and all the residents. So thank you for addressing a lot of those issues, um, the aesthetics issues, which you talked about lastly, which makes a big difference, you know, with landscaping and uh, the traffic flow, trying to mitigate uh, traffic to have it flow a little bit better for safety issues. We appreciate that and just really working along with the community to help, as you've said, to have a better product. Um, so we just appreciate that you all were being amenable to do that and working with the community. Again, all, everyone involved, in, including staff, inclusive of staff, to come up with a product uh, that we can really wrap our arms around and try to support, um, especially if the community supports it. So thank you again for coming in this evening. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Dr. Berdanley? Thank you, um, Councilman Adams. I echo the mayor's comments. I just wanted to say, um, gentlemen, staff, you have you've done very well. Actually, it would be nice to have developers to meet with the residents on the front end. It makes things so much easier, and I'm, I'm very impressed with your presentation. And I am waiting to hear the comments of the residents as well. But thank you for your time. You put some really good work into it. It makes a big difference. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Berdanley. Other comments or uh, of council or questions that council may have? Uh, Chair, uh, Councilman Essence, I see you hitting your mic. Go ahead. Yes, uh, just very briefly, and, and I'll, I may make additional comments after any citizens speak, but but I also would like to commend you, all, you guys and, and the citizens and staff, because this has been just an exemplary um, example of of how developers can work with citizens to address issues and that that are brought up by the citizens and by council. I mean, uh, every point that that you have gone through, Baxter, um, those were all brought up at, at our previous meetings, and, and you all did the work with the community. So I thank you for that, and I look forward to hearing from the community members. Thank you, Councilman Estes. Any other? Councilman Adams? Uh, yes, uh, Councilman Davis, go ahead. With this uh, COVID out, how did you uh, bring the communities together? How did you reach out to the community and how many did you reach out to? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So after the, I believe that was, it would have been the voting session when we came and requested tabling. Um, that was when we had the most uh, community members come to the actual meeting where I got to see them and got to speak with them after that meeting. And there were a few leaders there that I exchanged contact information with. And in the days that followed, just reached out to them. Um, we looked at some dates to set up a, a physical face-to-face -face community meeting. Um, we met last Tuesday at, I believe it's the Ike Owens Community Center. Great facility, by the way. For my first time going there, great facility, great for meetings, anyone that's listening and needs a meeting. <laughs> we met there, um, and what we had the opportunity, excuse me, opportunity to do at that time was we had worked on some of these changes already, um, particularly the drives, changing those. So we had the chance to present the changes that we'd already made, but then also hear feedback from the neighbors at that meeting. 
Um, with the sign-in sheet that we had, I believe we had approximately 15 neighbors show up in person. But what was great is um, one of the neighborhood leaders brought his laptop, so we had a Zoom set up that way, a, a video conference. So there were a few members who also joined that way. So it was probably in the range of 15 to 20 members. Um, I, I will say, just so that you know, everything's up front, we, there, there may still be some concerns from the neighbors. I don't want to portray that we are lockstep meeting in the minds in every way with them, but we have done our best, as I said, to, to meet some of their concerns. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, uh, Coach Watts, go ahead. Um, I, like everybody else said, I, I'm uh, grateful that y'all work hard to work with the community. And that's not always the case in a lot of places. I, I think that's becoming a standard here in Douglasville, uh, the developers that are coming in. And so I, I'm, I'm proud of that. I'm proud of how closely our staff works to get things done with developers. Uh, one of my concerns, one of my favorite places in the whole wide world is Sweetwater Park. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was kind of concerned about the impact. I was surprised to discover that Sweetwater Park uh, welcomes light industrial uh, as neighbors. Uh, I was surprised by that. And, uh, you know, so some of my fears have been put to rest. So anyway, appreciate y'all's hard work on this. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. Is anyone else? Okay, at this time, then I'm going to open the floor for those that may be here that would like to speak either for or against, and I'll ask uh, our assistant city manager, do we have anyone on virtually to speak on this item? No, sir. Okay. Is there anyone here that would speak in person? Please come forward if you're speaking. First of all, let's uh, speak in support of, and if not, uh, then we'll go in, in uh, objection to if you just identify yourself and give us your position, please. Thank you for coming. I'm all messed up here. <laughs> Good afternoon. My name is Yolanda Walker. I am a resident at 1451 Mount Vernon Road. Um, so right across the street from where it's coming. And now that I'm in the meeting, I'm kind of torn. So, I, you know, we were, I will commend Baxter and the team. They did meet with us. I was a part of that meeting when they met with us. And we did have a lot of concerns. Some of those concerns have been eased today. But there's still some. You know, we, I live right across the street. And while there's, you know, some greenery there, I don't know how quickly that greenery is going to be where I can't see a warehouse. It's really hard to hide a warehouse. So we're still concerned about property value. That's a big issue for us because we're right across the street. The other thing is the traffic. Um, it was the first time I heard about the bars because we talked a lot about, you know, the traffic turning on Lynch Road. So that was the first time we heard that today. So we can ease that, but we get a lot of trucks and we have a lot of concern about the trucks coming out of Mount Vernon Road. So while they may not turn, they may, if there's an accident, they get off at uh, Lee and come down, or not, uh, uh, Fabron Road, and sometimes come down the other way on Mount Vernon. And we've had trucks turn over. So it's real concern about safety on Mount Vernon. If you notice, if you've been over there lately, for those of you who visit Sweetwater, there's still that marquee that's down because we hear those accidents at night and it, it scares us when we hear the accident. So there's still a concern about the traffic and the visibility of seeing a warehouse across the street from our homes. So that's all I have for now, but I, I do appreciate all of the, the, the hard work that's gone into getting us this far. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, ma'am. Are there others? Coach, did you have another comment? Well, I was just gonna say in response, uh, I share some of our concerns about truck traffic on that road, not the, uh, the, pr the proposed new neighbors, but just traffic in general. I've, I'm down Mount Vernon a lot because I'm over Sweetwater a lot, but, uh, and that's something that's gonna have to be addressed by the county, uh, those concerns, because that's a county road. But I, I share some of your concerns, uh, Madam, about, about truck traffic especially. Uh, up and down that road because there's, you know, no, there's only one way to go and they're all going all, there's no in place for them to go other than back to Highway uh, 92. And so anyway, I don't know what can be done about that, but I share her concern. Uh, Councilman Estes had another comment. As, yes, as somebody who is, is very sensitive to, to the, the issue of trucks um, yeah. in proximity to their home, <laughs> I totally understand that, and, and while I know this particular project is not responsible for the, for the problem, and you all are doing everything it looks like, or you're 
discussing doing everything you can to prevent it from being aggravated by this development. I would request that if this is approved, that you all do try and, and add some pressure to the county to see about getting the, some traffic issues at least discussed, if not addressed. If I can speak to that, Councilman, um, I heard that as a as a charge at the last meeting to try at least do our best to reach out to count to the county and their transportation department. We've done that. Okay. We have reached out to the transportation department of the county um, to for a few reasons. One is to see what solutions could be possible, mm -hmm. particularly at the corner there of Lynch Road and Mount Vernon, where you've if you had someone trying to take a left there. I, I know from speaking with the residents that. That's an issue that they've raised is the stacking that occurs there. So we've reached out to the county to see what options are possible with the, with the right of way width. Um, but also, in addition to talking about specific solutions for our project, on behalf of the neighbors to raise awareness mm -hmm. about the traffic issues here. Because what I learned um, since the last meeting is I went through the county's future transportation planning documents that are currently on the books, and I know that they're working on updating that plan right now, there's not enough attention paid mm -hmm. to this roadway and to this area. So what we wanted to do was wave that flag and raise that issue as a new project comes in. So that's something that we've, we've done is to try to reach out and we'll continue to do is, as development, if it should move forward, moves forward. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Baxter, and thank you, uh, Councilman Estes. Uh, just a, a, a note there, and, and I know that most of you all in attendance obviously are aware of this, but we have been in this position prior in other, at other times where we have situations and rezonings and annexations and so forth that, that just happen to sit on the boundary line between the city and the county. And so we, as, as representatives of our constituents in the city, we have responsibility, of course, to them, but also we want to be sensitive to those that just because they live outside the limits of our city, they are not, uh, they, their, their concerns do not go unnoticed and, uh, and taken into consideration. And I appreciate uh, the professionalism that everyone has had. Uh, uh, Mr. Russell, your team, and also the, the, uh, the neighborhood, because I think you have done uh, a good job in trying to listen and plan and make changes. And uh, uh, I'm glad to see this amount of progress that has already been made. Uh, Madam Mayor, did you have another comment? I did. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Um, Attorney Russell, have you had any success with reaching with the inquiry to? No, no ma'am. Wow. Um, Ms. Williams, could you make a point of talking to transportation, Mr. Valentine, and I will call Commissioner uh, Robinson, who is over transportation, and Dr. <coughs> Uh, Ramona Jackson Jones, the, the chair, to talk about this issue. I'm disappointed that. I, I've reached out to Mr. Valentine directly, and hmm. I, I know he's a very busy man. So, I mean, my messages may have been lost in the system along yes, the way, but but we have reached out to him. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'll I'll personally do something. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, Ms. You. Walker, bring it to our attention. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, and I mean we will, as Baxter and staff reach out to the county you mm -hmm. know we will offer our services to help um, along with our engineer to try to coordinate something and what might make sense um, at that intersection for all parties mm -hmm. our development um, and the neighbors thank you sir other comments seeing none then uh, i will close this portion of that of the um, item as far as the public hearing and we will come back on monday uh, with this information and uh, hope to make a decision on that item for you. Thank you all for being here. We'll move on to item B, tabled from April 5th, 2021. Consider a request for approval for a development plan for Sweetwater Point for 5.062 acres at Stewart, Mill, Stewart Parkway and Douglas Boulevard, located in land lot 130, District 2, Section 5, Parcel 90 for plans dated February 18th, 2021. Application by Alan Collins. Ms. Williams is going to present that for us. Patrice Williams, Community Development Director, 6701 Church Street. Uh, Sweetwater Point is an age-restricted community comprised of 96 units in one three-story building. The subject property was approved for change in zoning, general commercial, 
to PRD, Plan Residential District, for 5.062 acres at Stewart Parkway and Douglas Boulevard. During our last round of meetings, the applicant and staff requested that this item be tabled to address concerns of fire. At that time, the pulpit walls were beyond the 30 feet allowed by the fire department. Since our last meeting, the applicant was able to make changes that satisfies uh, the fire department. With that being said, city staff has reviewed the application and attachments and has determined that the proposed plans for the age-restricted community meets the development requirements of the UDL. And as you can see from your attachments, they have provided a new uh, rendering for the development. Thank you, Ms. Williams. I will open the floor for questions or comments, and I would like to start with Dr. Berdanley since she is not here with us, just in case she may need to check out. Dr. Berdanley, do you have any comment concerning this item? I do not, and you are absolutely right. I, I can't hold any more, so I will see you all on Monday. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Berdanley. Bye-bye. <laughs> uh, anyone have any comment or question? Yes, Madam Mayor, go ahead. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Ms. Williams and the applicants. We appreciate um, you all. Uh, jumping through hoops to try to make this work. We apologize for any inconvenience, but we thank you for your time in presenting a beautiful rendering, and um, we're excited to see what you have. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, any others? Mayor Pro Tem, did you have a comment? Yeah, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chair. I also want to uh, express my appreciation with the developer and working with the city council and trying to uh, you sort of given a tough hand there dealing with um, the fire code requirements, but I think you know, that I appreciate the, the, the effort that's being made. Mr. Chair, that's all. Thank you, sir. Um, I, I just call attention to page number eight in our packet, I believe is the updated rendering with the parapet walls actually having been removed. And uh, that will give you an idea of uh, the, the type of building, the, uh, the facades and everything that they are planning to do. So. If there are no other questions or comments, Ms. Jackson, there was no one on, online. To, I'm sorry, and please don't let me run past anyone if I fail to ask. Uh, if not, then we will take this up for a vote on Monday to approve uh, this development plan. Thank you, Ms. Williams. You're welcome. We'll move on to item C. They were here, they wanted to say anything. Oh, Mr. I'm Chairman. sorry, I'm so sorry. If you all had information that you'd like to provide in addition, then I welcome those comments. I'm sorry, I did not allow that. I know you came all the way here. You don't want to say anything. Look at real sharp. I can tell the look on your through your eyes in the mask. You want to say something, Madam Mayor? It's, it's a pleasure. Name. Thank you, um, and Council. Uh, very excited and sir. Oh, name and address yeah. for the record. Dennis I'm Richards. so sorry to have to remind you of that. I'm sorry. That's all right. Dennis Richards, 260 Peachtree Street, Atlanta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. Just want to say thank you all very much for your support thus far. Very excited. Moving. Um, very quickly towards the closing. So looking forward to getting this closed this summer. And, um, excited to have you all at the groundbreaking. Thank, Thank you. Take care. Appreciate it so much, folks. Okay, item C, consider a request for a revised plat approval for Douglasville Crossroads for the purpose of revising lot lines for track four for 2.51 acres at 1000 Lennon Cole Drive, land lot 161, district two, section five, parcel 94, application by HRC Incorporated. Ms. Williams. Okay. Patrice Williams, Community Development Director, 6701 Church Street. The applicant, HRC Incorporated, is seeking a revised final plat approval for Douglasville Crossroads for the purpose of revising lot lines for tracks four, track four for 2.51 acres at 1000 Lenacall Drive. This revision replaces the plat of Douglasville Crossroads by Robert Armstrong, dated 10-26-1999, Recorded in plat book 41, pages 92 and 93. According to the memo provided by Aaron McCullough with HRC, this request is to separate and clearly distinguish property lines for mortgage lenders, so it's a housekeeping item. City staff has reviewed the application and attachments and has determined that the proposed plat meets final plat requirements of the UDO. Staff recommends approval of this revised final plat. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Do we have comments or questions concerning the item? You can see in our packet, uh, this item, page number four, basically the shaded area of Ms. Williams is what is involved. Okay. And I see that we have Mr. Walter Rowe with HRC, uh, I'm sorry, with Hartley Rowe and Fowler, not with HRC with us tonight. It may be able to answer any questions if you all may have any. Ms. Williams, uh, 
I'm sorry, Ms. Jackson, there's no one here online. Okay, please remind me. Any comment or question concerning the item? We'll move right along now. We've got plenty to do. Thank you. That's all that we have no comment or question on that item. We'll move forward. We'll take it up on Monday. We'll go to item D. Consider a request for a revised plant final plat approval for Concourse Center for the purpose of revising lot lines for lots 9 and 10 for 4.9 9 acres at 7101 and 7055 Concourse Parkway, land lot 161, District 2, Section 5, parcels 10 and 44. Again, application by HRC Incorporated. Uh, Ms. Ms. Williams, it looks like some similar in the same area. Go ahead. Very similar. Uh, the second item by HRC is seeking a revised final plat approval for Concourse Central, Central for the purpose of revising lot lines at 7101 and 7055 Concourse Parkway. This revision replaces the plat of Concourse Center by Paul McInnes, dated 7-15-1997, recorded in plat book 23, page 89. According to the memo provided by Aaron McCullough, this request is to separate and clearly distinguish property lines for mortgage lenders. Staff does approve this uh, request. Thank you. Comments, questions? Yes, uh, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, go ahead. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to take them both together. My assumption is, if it's not correct, this is really just a like, uh, house cleaning for, for, uh, for uh, the, the subdivision, essentially. Well, that's the right it's word, house but. cleaning on both sides. Yeah. Okay, there's not really, nothing is being affected really in terms of usage of the property or or setbacks or anything like Correct. that, or zoning. It's just really cleaning up the property lines. Absolutely. Okay, just wanna make sure everybody was clear on that. Yes, sir, it would appear to me that they would be doing what I would what I would have called in the old days um, a um, as-built as to what's actually there and make sure right. that the right-of-ways are in place and the mortgage company has an interest as they need to have in the properties with a, with a correct legal description as the way it appears. Mr. Rowe, would you agree with that? That's correct. Okay. Any other question or comment? All righty. Then we'll take that up on Monday also. We have uh, two other items. Item E, consider a request for revised final plat approval for Riverside West Phase 2 for the purpose of identifying the Mason House within Tract A and removing Tract E on 355.279 acres at North River Road Land lot 166, District 1, Section 5, parcels 1, 2, and 4. And land lot 173, District 1, Section 5, parcels 2 and 11. And land lot 998, District 18, Section 2, parcel 1. Application by Brian Cardoza with Rooker Riverside, LLC. Ms. Williams. Okay, Patrice Williams, Community Development Director, 6701 Church Street. Uh, before I forget, Mr. Cardoza is on the line with us tonight, so if you have any questions for him, he's available. Uh, but he is actually seeking a revised final plat approval to show the location of the Mason House within Track A and to remove Track E for 359.259 acres at North River Road. The original final plat was approved on December 7, 2020. However, the Mason House was mistakenly left off. This revision replaces a plat recorded in plat book 41, page 93 and 92. City staff has reviewed the application and attachments and has determined that the proposed plat meets final plat requirements of the UDL. Staff recommends approval of the revised final plat. Thank you, Ms. Williams. We'll recognize Mr. Cardoza just to see if he has any additional comments for us. Uh, good evening, sir. Hey, good evening. How are you? We're great. How are you? Good, good. Thank you. I don't have anything oh, for Brian Cardoza, Ripper Riverside. 445 Bishop Street, Atlanta, Georgia, 30318. Uh, I don't have any additional comments, but I'm happy to answer questions if you have any. Thank you, sir. Uh, we'll open the floor to any comment or question. Does anyone have any concerning this, again, housekeeping item to correct a final plan? Seeing none, then we will take this up on Monday. Thank you, Mr. Cardoza, and we'll take this up on Monday. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Item F, consider a request for final plat approval for the purpose of subdividing into two lots, 38.782 acres at 1551 Riverside Parkway, land lot 176, District 1, Section 5, Parcel 1, application by LMC Riverside Holdings, LLC. Ms. Williams. Okay. Patrice Williams, Community Development Director, 6701 Church Street. The applicant is with us on, um, on Zoom tonight. The applicant, LMC, 
Riverside Holdings LLC is requesting a final plat approval for the purpose of splitting 38.782 acres into two tracks at 1551 Riverside Parkway. Emblem, formally presented as the preserve, is a multifamily development currently under building review. The project will be developed on track two. Track one will be used for a second phase of the development. City staff has reviewed the application and attachments and has determined that the proposed plan meets the requirements of the UDL. Staff recommends approval. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Uh, we'll recognize the applicant in case they have anything to add before we have any question or comment. Who is with us? Mr. Ray Crocker. Mr. Crocker? Y yes, sir. Can you give us your name and, name and address for the record and we welcome any comments. Yes, sir. Ray Crocker, 55 Chafin Road, Roswell, Georgia. Uh, I don't have any further comment, but can answer questions if there are any. Thank you. Uh, one question I have is I want to make sure, and this may be for a question for staff, Ms. Williams, uh, could you tell us what the proposed plan is uh, as to what is already being worked on? Everything that we had approved thus far, I believe, did you tell me was already um, proposed in the plan to stay on phase one? on That's that property correct. to begin with. So correct. there's no change, no change in a development plan. No, he just wants to split the parcel for a potential uh, future development. Okay. Mr. Crocker, is that uh, basically what your plan is? Yes, sir. Okay. Questions, comments, anyone? Okay. Seeing none, then we will take this up on Monday. And thank you, Ms. Williams. Thank you, Mr. Crocker. Thank you. Last item, Madam Mayor. Wow. Refer to the Planning Commission a proposed ordinance to adopt a new City of Douglasville zoning map. Application is by the City of Douglasville. Ms. Ms. Williams, tell us about that. Okay, Patrice Williams, Community Development Director, 6701 Church Street. As you can see from your attachment, uh, in the past couple of years or year and a half, you all have rezoned, annexed about 41 different parcels. And so it's time for us to update our map. And so we are requesting that um, this be passed over to the Planning Commission and they'll have a look at it and then they'll send it back to Mayor Council to vote on it. Thank you, Ms. Williams. When she first mentioned this to me uh, a couple of days ago, I, I, I cringed. I said, wait a minute, we're not about to make a bunch of changes, are we? I wanted to make sure it was just to update what we have already done. And obviously, as you've mentioned, 40 some odd parcels, we, need, we do need an update. Mm -hmm. Question, comment? Thank you, Ms. Williams. Okay. Appreciate that. We'll take it up then. If, if there is no, if there is no reason not to, I would like to say, if, if we could, I would like to have at least one item on the consent agenda for Monday. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you, Appreciate Mr. that very much, Madam Mayor. That's all we have. Mr. Chairman, I am impressed. You had an extensive committee uh, items, and he went. Can you believe that? Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. We'll move on then to item number 11, which is Public Improvement and Beautification Committee. That's chaired by Councilmember Nicole Miller. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have no business this evening. Thank you, ma'am. Public Relations Committee, chaired by Councilmember um, Howard Estes. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We also have no business this evening. Sounds good. Thank you. Public Safety Committee, chaired by Councilmember Samuel Davis. Yes, ma'am. We have. Uh huh. Is your microphone on? Okay, you have we a have booming one voice. Item there this you afternoon. go. Mm -hmm. Holding a public hearing to consider a request in the change in agent outlet manager for the alcoholic beverage license for the on premises sale and consumption mm -hmm. of wine and malt beverage and spirits liquor at the following establishment mm -hmm. License GMRI INC DBA, the Olive Garden Italian Restaurant, mm -hmm. number 1531, location 6710 Douglas Boulevard. Current agent outlet manager, Mario Catella, proposed agent outlet manager, Kelvin Williams. Mm -hmm. The required fees has been paid into the finance department. Mm -hmm. And Kevin Williams, if you're here, will you come down? Okay. Good afternoon, sir. State your name and, and address for the record, please. Good afternoon, Madam Mayor and mm -hmm. Council. Uh, my name is Kelvin Williams, uh, 6710 Douglas Boulevard, uh, the Olive Garden Restaurant. Okay. Good. And how long have you been uh, the manager? Um, I've been there uh, since September, end of September. Okay. And how do you go about training your employees for alcohol? And uh... It's uh, the, the process that we use when they first uh, uh, come to work with us. Their training starts, but they're not allowed to do anything with alcohol until mm -hmm. they actually go and... Uh, 
uh, get their permits to serve the alcoholic beverages. Everyone in the building um, has to have those permits if they're doing anything with alcohol. That's good. Mayor and Council? Yes, ma'am. Madam Mayor? Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Welcome, Mr. Williams. It's good to have you here. How's Thank business? You. Uh, so business is, is, is good. It's, it's been getting a lot better. Okay, um, good. Staffing, not so much, but business is going well. <laughs> well, if you have brought some salads with you this evening, no, just kidding. Uh -oh. um, it's, it's As I was you. sitting over there listening, I was like, I'm pretty sure everybody's probably kind of hungry right now. I wish I was <laughs> Well, thank you so much. And now you've explained how your um, your individuals are um, have the education or training before they become servers. How do you check for the um, the people that are you know purchasing food in um, Olive Garden? Okay, there's two two phases to it. Um, mm -hmm. We have our little computers that are on the uh, what we call ZIOs that are on the tables. Mm -hmm. um, guests can order beverages from that, but even when they do. It doesn't bring up uh, the table or come from the bar until the mm -hmm. actual server is able to go over there and verify their um, IDs and make sure that everything is uh, correct before it's brought to the table. Um, and the second phase is they ID anyone who looks like they're younger than 40. Now, the standard practice for most restaurants mm -hmm. is if they look younger than 30, mm -hmm. that you, uh, we're like, we're not taking chances with that. That's too, yeah. we want them to look, I guess, Elderly, basically. <laughs> Look so like me. if if they don't if they don't fit the bill, it's like I, I told service if you're not comfortable, mm -hmm. I don't care if they look 80. If you're not comfortable, ID them. Okay, thank you. So that really protects the patrons and yourself, um, yes. Chief. Have we had any concerns at Olive Garden? No, ma'am. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Williams. Thank, thank you, you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Any other council members? You sure? Going once. <laughs> Okay. No takers. And I've seen the sign that says hiring is staff. Is staff coming back to work now? Yes, we have a lot of staff that's coming back to work. Um, that's good. The thing with staffing is our business, we're basically at half capacity mm -hmm. um, because of the CDC guidelines. Mm -hmm. um, but our business is coming back a lot quicker than the staff is. So yes, it's, it's been some challenges, but we're, we're moving forward. Okay, okay good. Well, thank you for uh, your application, and uh, if there's no other question, we're going to hold a public hearing. And the public hearing is, is uh, five minutes for those who speak uh, against this, the uh, establishment, and five for those who speak for. So at this time, we hold a public hearing for five, five minutes for those who speak against. Looks like we have no takers. Anyone online? Okay, five minutes for those who speak in favor. Like we have no one, sir. So uh, we'll close the public hearing and thank you and come back on uh, on Monday. My pleasure. And, uh, thank you. We might take that salad. <laughs> 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 thank you, sir. Do. All right. Thank you, Mr. Thank you all. <laughs> That's all I have, Madam Mayor. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Recreation, Culture, and Tourism Committee. That's chaired by Councilmember Chris Watts. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have no business night in Recreation, Culture, and Tourism. Thank you, sir. Technology Committee, chaired by Councilmember Mayor Pro Tem, Terry Miller. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have no business at this time under the Technology Committee. Thank you, sir. Transportation Committee, Vice Chair, Councilmember Davis. Madam this time I might keep going out. Okay, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. It. Vice Chair. Uh, do we have any other business to come before committees, I mean, uh, not committees, but legislative work session tonight from council members? Only thing I um, wanted to announce is that we do have uh, the Chamber of Commerce and the Council for Quality Growth is sponsoring the uh, state of the city and state of the county. And I believe it's next Wednesday, the 21st. Um, and it's at 11 o'clock here at the conference center. So if you're not able to attend in person, it is in person. If you're not able to attend in person, it will be um, televised as well. And I don't know the platform, but uh, the chamber is sponsoring it. So that's the only announcement that I had. Any announcements from council members? Okay, so we'll move on then to updates from city staff or city attorney, Mr. Joel Dotson. No business, Madam Mayor. Thank you, sir. A staff attorney, Ms. Uh, Lynn Woodward. Thank you, ma'am. The chief is back there. Chief, 
Sparks, you have anything? Uh, yes, ma'am. On April the 20th mm -hmm. at 1230, we will have our third, I think, food, free food distribution at the police department. So mm -hmm. April the 20th at 1230, uh, come on by the police department and we'll have some uh, free food to give away. Okay, that's Tuesday at 1230 at the police department. Yes. Municipal building? Yes. Okay. Thank you so much, Chief. Food distribution. Um, anything else, Chief? No, ma'am. That's it? Okay, good. Um, our city manager, Ms. Marcia Hampton, welcome back. Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, I sent you all an email about activities and opening and city operations. So as of May 3rd, I think I've heard um, from most of you all, um, we will be back to business as usual, as best that we can. Um, as uh, far as the July 4th parade staff is recommending, uh, that we uh, withhold that again for this year um, due to just not being able to manage or uh, know what the crowd expectation would be like, but we will proceed with fireworks for this year. Um, we do have that con uh, that contract. We feel like people can watch fireworks from their homes or from their cars and do that in a safe manner um, where we don't think that we can really manage a crowd for uh, the parade. Um, we will um, introduce back in activities, small events, inclusive of things at our park. So again, um, city operations will run um, pretty much 100% just at more of a limited capacity, but we will be open to the public. I will have Chelsea Jackson come up just to give you all um, a highlight of what's in the governor's orders and particularly mm -hmm. as it pertains to our future meetings. Um, if, if you all know that we are under an emergency order, which means that it does allow for virtual attendance. Um, but uh, Chelsea is going to explain to you what happens when and if that um, emergency order expires. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Chelsea Jackson, 6695 Church Street. As Ms. Hampton stated, the public health state of emergency does end on April 30th. Mm -hmm. um, there's a chance that the governor can and will renew it, but with decreasing guidelines, staff is anticipating and gearing up that he will not renew and it'll possibly end. So with that being said, the guidelines set forth as it relates to facilities are now reduced to 42 inches, as I stated in the committee's mm -hmm. meeting, which is about three and a half feet. Um, with no capacity limit um, except for those set forth by the fire marshal and whatnot. So for city and council meetings and board and authority meetings, what this basically means is that um, staff will continue to use technical, technical uh, hard work to say, technological, technological. sorry, there you go. thanks Ms. Hampton, um, solutions when possibly to reduce the person to person interaction. Mm -hmm. But um, when the state of emergency isn't renewed on April 30th, that means that council members are will be unable to participate on a virtual platform mm -hmm. unless there's a quorum physically or if there's a health condition that permits them to actually come in. Um, also, um, Ms. Woodward can speak more to that, but council members are allowed two virtual meetings in a calendar year, so they can use that as long as a quorum is physically. Mm -hmm. Okay, Ms. Woodward, do you wanna, the same thing for WSA, you only have two a year when you can do virtual call in or something. Right, and I don't have anything to add um, on top of what Ms. Jackson just presented. Okay. So we will just keep you all posted um, uh, as the orders. Um, Ms. Jackson and Jason Post are, are the ones that typically uh, read through the orders when we get them and just mm -hmm. notify you. Um, you know, there, there's a good chance that he will extend it again. However, um, as Ms. Jackson said, the governor is continuously um, lessening mm -hmm. uh, the, the restrictions. Mm -hmm. So I, I just don't see that those are gonna probably carry forward uh, much past the summer. So I, I think our time is, is fairly limited in this capacity if things continue to trend the way that they are. Okay, I'll open up for council to have comments. That three, how are we gonna look here? Is this three feet or how? You, you all are good. You all can stay this way if you, if you want to, um, but I, I I would think that inclusive also of the CDC that that is going to shrink as well. So you all will just have to let us know when you're ready and comfortable to sit closer. Yeah, I don't know if the council members, if you feel alienated outside of the. No, I think we still have to be cautious. I'm still so got to be cautious. Okay. <laughs> Oh gosh, Council Member Adams, you have, you've raised your hand. I just wanted to ask our city manager if, if, if we continue along this line, is there a possibility we would at least be able to go back with the Labor Day Parade with the Shrine Temple sponsorship? Um, I know I'm they handle thinking, that. 
I, I think Councilman Adams that the Shriners will possibly want to do that mm -hmm. if things continue to progress in a positive way. I, I can assure you, um, they so, will. I've already had conversation. Yeah, I, you know, and again, it's they do that parade. It's it's a lot easier, of course. You know, um, they have a lot more volunteers. You know, ours is strictly with staff, so it's a little bit harder for us to to manage in in some way. So, um, and of course. It would be July 4th would be a smaller parade because, of course, it's a um, municipal election, but it's, you know, definitely with law enforcement, <clears throat> limited staff, it's just something that is it's just probably for us at this point during the summer not in our best interest to do. Did, did you sidestep my question or <laughs> what would your recommendation be, <laughs> my recommendation, Madam City Manager? Well, my recommendation would be definitely for you all to consider if the Shriners want to move forward. I mean, of course, they put the parade on. We're, we're there for public safety purposes, but as far as setup and lineup, you know, they reach out to Greg, but a staff from outside of um, any other staff, we, we're not involved. So it really would be at your discretion to, to move forward based on what the the climate would be. I, I'm just speaking from my own personal mm -hmm. desire to see us come out right. as as the summer closes uh, and begin to get back into some sense of normalcy in the community if the numbers will allow that. I'm not advocating at all that we mm -hmm. that we push our uh, our limits there, but I uh, just wanted to hear your your input on that. And I'm sure it's all going to be based upon how things are as far as what's going on then. But I know that I have already had conversation at least once with some of the folks heavily involved in that. And I'm just curious. Yes, Thank I, you. And I would say, you know, for the Veterans Day Parade, you know, the county has, has taken a, a very um, strict approach. So I would say that they probably wouldn't, they may not be doing um, the Veterans Day Parade, but the Shriners, I, I just think that their volunteer base is just huge. They're able to just do things, I think, even that we can't do because of their volunteer support. I just like the idea of the city kind of leading the way, uh, showing everybody how to get back to normal. Yes, so. sir. Any other comments? Oh, Councilman Davis. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Madam Mayor and mm -hmm. uh, City Manager, as baseball and all the other sports have, have geared up and we're opening back up, will the park security, will that days change back to normal Monday through uh, Sunday. Uh, right now, I think they're Friday through Sunday. So with, with everything opening back up, more people are out. So um, We'll be discussing the park security agreement um, next month, I think, because that agreement is, is coming up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Mr. Landrum will talk to you all about, you know, where um, he feels as though the need will be. I will tell you that, you know, with all of the sports cranking back up, we are still looking at smaller numbers. I mean, we're not going to have as many teams as we typically have. Mainly, it's just slowly, gradually getting in the thing. So he'll have to make the recommendation as to whether or not there'll be a need um, for the security. And I, I will tell you that the chief shared with me some numbers on um, how things are going. And I know, of course, we've been in the pandemic, but it appears that for the past six months, um, we've had business as usual calls for public safety. So nothing. Mm -hmm that you wouldn't expect from. Can't we get a report? I, I can even, I can forward yeah, that to you. A report from. Yeah. Six. And that's from 911. Okay. So we, if they, if there was an incident at the park and they did not call 911, then we would not have a record of it. We would not. I would hope that park security would call 911. If they so, were there from an understanding, there have been some incidents outside of Friday through Sunday, but all those other days that they were not on duty. If something were happening with an individual, I would hope that 911 would have been called. I mean, okay. we do have zone patrol that mm -hmm. um, frequently attends the park, um, but if there was an incident, mm -hmm. and definitely, yeah, if 911 was not called, um, our staff, and if staff, if something happens while staff is there, staff notifies, not okay. especially for emergency purposes. Okay, very good. So, they, we, so we get a, uh, from Mr. Pearson and, and 911 call, we get a report. I can give you Mr. Pearson's report, but what I would suggest to you is that the 911 report is, is the emergency report. I mean, he may have some notes of things that he runs into, but mm -hmm. um, to me, as far as a public safety matter, I would rely on, on what's being reported through 911. And it's, it's not to negate the information that he has, but when you're looking at emergency, I look at the 911 calls as, as what's prompted as far as emergency. Okay. Any other comments from the body like the body. Well, thank you so much, Ms. City Manager. Uh, do we have any staff reports? 
Um, no, ma'am, we do not. We have comments from citizens and delegates. Do we have anyone online that would like to speak? Thank you, Ms. Jackson. Anyone in person? Thanks so much. Um, we do have an executive session, so I will open the floor um, for a motion to adjourn to executive session to discuss potential property disposition. Thank you so much, Councilman M. Thank you so much. Mayor Pro Tem, did you get it, Ms. Candace? Yes. Okay. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. We are, um, after a short recess, we're going to be adjourned to executive session to discuss potential property disposition. Adjourned. Recess. I did my part to speak. You did. I don't know. I'm proud of you. That was amazing. We're going to go fast in this executive session. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And tomorrow. I hope.